What is up, wrestling fans? JP from KV Chronicles, and yet once again, it is... This Week in Wrestling, the weekly wrestling segment where I cover all the major topics or minor topics that might have happened throughout the week. Uh, so yeah, this is follow-up week to Elimination Chamber, so as you guys saw earlier, I've already covered Elimination Chamber, so anything that happened in that pay-per-view, I'm not going to cover in this event. If you guys like, you can please check out my review of that event by following the link down below in the description. So, let's get started. Uh, so yeah, this week on Monday Night Raw, a lot of crazy stuff happened on Monday Night Raw. I'm going to start off with uh, the blatant obvious, and that is the sad breakup of Jericho. No, seriously. Uh, yeah, as you guys saw, uh, Chris Jericho and uh, Kevin Owens have decided to part ways after probably one of the best storylines of the entire past year and this year. Uh, you know, when they first kind of teamed up together, I was like, okay, this is absolutely freaking stupid. But just the way that they worked with each other, a lot of the jokes that, um, you know, that they played off of one another, uh, the way they would interfere in each other's matches, their repartee between each other was, was really some top-notch stuff. Um, and of course, the Festival of Friendship, the way that they broke up, was absolutely one of the best segments of the year. Uh, you know, they had the, the Michelangelo painting, Chris Jericho, who was all dressed up to the nines, uh, Kevin Owens came out like, derpity der, whatever, I'm Kevin Owens. But just the way that he did it, by having the list of KO, and like Jericho's name on it, just like Jericho's response, like, oh, a list? Why is my name on it? Um... Yeah, so, you know, obviously the team broke up. Uh, you know, maybe they're going to start a feud with one another. Who knows? Uh, the only thing that I kind of have a weird hankering in my stomach that doesn't make me feel too good is the fact that they've broken up might mean that Goldberg is going to beat Kevin Owens at Fastlane for the Universal title, which, in my opinion, would be a very <laughs> move of WWE, but how often do they listen to me? I'm just some dude in a room full of toys. So, um... Who knows where this is going to go, uh, maybe they faked beating each other up just to throw Goldberg off of his uh, game, hopefully that is what it is, but yeah, as of right now, there is no more Jericho, and this makes me very, very sad. Another thing that happened on Raw this week is Bailey. everybody's favorite Bayley, uh, won the Raw Women's Championship uh, against Charlotte, and what can we say, the stereotypical Charlotte way of losing her title on the regular, regular weekly programs, only to win it back two weeks later at the pay-per-view. Um, you know, everyone's saying that this is probably what's going to happen, which I think, A, sucks, because we've seen the storyline so many times already. Uh, and B, like, I was really hoping that Bayley would win the championship at WrestleMania. Like, I just figured, like, see, since she's such a crowd favorite ridiculously over with the fans. I haven't seen a uh, superstar this over with the fans in quite some time. You know, I figured, like, her winning her first championship would be a WrestleMania moment, so I feel that like WWE kind of shit the bed in regards to that, uh, costing a big, big moment like that. Um, you know, who knows Who knows what's going to happen with this? It is a little sad, like I said, but, you know, we, we can't win them all. Um, granted, yeah, like I said, Charlotte's probably going to win at the next pay-per-view, therefore setting something up for WrestleMania for her to win it back, but yeah, I really think that they should have had her win, uh, then instead of now, but hey, you know what, congratulations to Bayley, uh, I've been a huge fan of yours since day one, I've loved your character work, you're great to watch, you're always super fun, uh, so yay, you deserve it, you deserve the title, I was just hoping to be a little bit later instead of now, but hey, who knows, the storyline still might go somewhere, so... After 17 long weeks of wondering and waiting, Emelina finally made her WWE debut to nothing. She came out and went, I'm going back to Emma, and left. I'm not kidding. That's literally what happened. At least that's what I think happened, because I really wasn't paying attention because it was so quick. But yeah, I'm, I don't know. It's, just, it's really weird, because like, Emma... Back in her NXT days, like, she was definitely, like, a person I really enjoyed watching. Like, I liked her feud with some of the other women. I liked her and Dana Brooke paired up together. They were absolutely super fun to watch. Like, they worked so well with each other. And so, of course, when, you know, they came into, uh, you know, both got set up to Raw. Of course, Emma had, like, that that injury. Therefore, Dana Brooke kind of kind of to go with Charlotte. So, that was really struck when they decided to make this whole new character for Emma. Uh, to be honest, pair her back up with Dana. There was nothing wrong with that. Her and Dana Brooke worked really good together. Um, you know, unfortunately, Dana really isn't gelling with Charlotte right now. I think they just kind of put her in that role because they didn't have anything else for her. But now that Emma's back, put them together. I would like to see a female tag team. 
Like, you know, like the tag team division needs a little bit of work, so why not some women tag teams? That'd be super fun. I think that's a cool idea. Uh, but yeah, Emma's back. Who knows what the hell's gonna happen with that, but hey, whatever. <clears throat> Dana Brooke. Over to the SmackDown side in regards to the world title picture. That's right, the world title picture. Uh, of course, Bray Wyatt won the world championship, uh, so therefore Randy Orton should technically be his opponent at, uh, at WrestleMania. But no, what happens? Randy Orton comes out and flat out tells Bray Wyatt, No, I cannot fight you. You are my master and I am your slave. I cannot fight you. So next week on SmackDown, they're going to have a battle royal to determine the number one competitor for WrestleMania. Uh... Now, everyone's saying this, and I fully agree as well, too, but I'm calling Luke Harper is going to win the Battle Royal, and he will get the title shot. Now, granted, it'll be Luke Harper versus Bray Wyatt, but Randy Orton's going to somehow find his way into the picture, so we're going to have a Wyatt family triple threat at WrestleMania, which, to be honest, I wouldn't even be that mad with. I think that would be actually a really cool match, way better than what Raw will probably produce. Uh, but yeah... So here, here's here's hoping that, that it's going to end up that way. Uh, here's hoping that Luke Harper can get into the title picture because, like I said, he is a beautiful man with a majestic beard and he knows how to fight like nobody else. On a sad note, as you guys probably heard earlier earlier this week, uh, Chavo Guerrero Sr., that's right, Chavo Classic, uh, brother of uh, the late, great Eddie Guerrero and, of course, father of uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr., uh, sadly passed away after his uh, battle with, uh, with cancer. Um... I didn't really follow the Guerreros too much, like, back in the olden days. Like, I didn't really see Chavo Guerrero Sr. wrestle until he came into WWE as, as Chavo Jr.'s uh, manager. Um, but, you know, he, he seemed like, you know, just kind of reading up on him the past little while just to get a little bit of research. Uh, he seemed like like he was definitely one to watch in his youth. Uh, like, you know, said he, you know, kind of worked with all the Guerreros. He was the oldest out of the brothers. Uh I liked him as the Cruiserweight Champion, ironically, when he did win it a while back. Uh, like, he during his WWE tenure days, uh, he was the oldest Cruiserweight Champion, of course. Uh, not just something, he just seemed to carry himself very well when he was in there. Um, he was pretty fun to watch. Uh, you know, he's, I, I, I like the whole storyline, you know, of him. Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, WWE had to cut ties with him after a couple no-shows uh, back in the day. And it's sad that we didn't get to see him, you know, come back recently. Uh, he did, of course, uh, a couple years ago... Uh, he he drove Alberto Del Rio to uh, in a limousine as kind of like a throwback gag there, uh, but yeah, you know it's kind of sad, you know what happened. But you know it's a full circle of life. You know you you're born, you live your life, you die, kind of thing. But you know I'm I'm glad glad I was able to see some of his work. He was always pretty fun, fun work. So like uh, my thoughts, prayers out to the Guerrero family during this time. It's, it's always sad when a member of the wrestling community or just anyone in general passes away. So rest in peace, Chavo Classic, and thank you. And there you guys have it. Did I miss anything? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Please subscribe to the station for more great videos as always. Follow us on Twitter using the two name tags down below in the description. This is JP from Kayfabe Chronicles, and I will see you all next time.